All right, thanks folks for uh, joining me in this short video. And what we're going to talk about today is we're gonna talk about Microsoft Teams and Project Align together. All right, many of you have used Microsoft Teams alone, many of you used Microsoft Project Align alone. Uh, we're gonna show you a way in which you can use them together. Regarding the format of, of today's presentation, uh, I'll introduce myself very quickly. We'll talk about uh, who Intigent is, uh, the company I'm working for. We'll go over Microsoft PPM very briefly. We'll look at Microsoft Teams very briefly, and then we'll go into a demonstration of uh, the product. Uh, my name is Dan Bell, executive here, uh, director at Intigent, and I've been working in this project management industry since roughly 2002 and have helped customers uh, really tackle many different pain points over the years, whether it's project management, resource management, or trying to align projects with uh, strategic objectives um, have really helped uh, a wide variety of customers with this different pain points. Uh, with regard to uh, Intigent LLC, the value we deliver, we provide uh, services and training in several different areas. Uh, first of all, we provide technical uh, technology and project management training. We provide training that provides true integration of best practice and tool-centered learning. Uh, the courses are highly practical. They encourage student participation and they're focused on results. We also provide Microsoft technology consulting and support. Uh, the three technologies primarily we're involved with are Microsoft PPM, that's Microsoft Project and Project Online, as well as Microsoft Dynamic CRM, and then lastly, SharePoint Online. And then finally, we also provide um, project management consulting in which we help organizations tackle pain points they may be having with their projects, bringing them on on time, on budget, using resources effectively, and uh, other topics. So let's move into talking a little bit about the Microsoft Project and Portfolio Management Solution. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Microsoft uh, PPM is Microsoft's all-inclusive PPM solution for project portfolio program managers, resource managers, and team members. And uh, during this presentation, we're going to discuss just the, really the broad capabilities of the solution. We're not going to go into a lot of detail. At its most uh, basic element, the success of a project comes down to a couple different things. Did it advance the company's goals, uh, aka align with the strategic objectives of why a company is in business, or for instance, expanding into new markets and segments? And was it successfully executed to meet the specific project goals like delivering the expected scope, uh, delivering that scope on budget and on time? As far as the Microsoft PPM solution helps you deliver business strategies through high impact outcomes, you can think of PPM as a life cycle which comprises three primary phases, ideate, plan, and execute. Ideate being the initial phase in which ideas are collected, projects are proposed, the organization's business drivers capture the company's strategy, and the guide ideation. Um, then we move into plan if uh, items are actually selected based on the company's key strategy. This phase includes preliminary planning of the projects at the high level. Microsoft's PPM solution helps prioritize the projects subject to budget and resource constraints. Once projects are approved, solution supports detailed and realistic planning. And then finally, in execute, the goal of this phase is to deliver the projects through collaboration of involved stakeholders. It's built on Microsoft's cloud. Microsoft PPM weaves in cloud services that power the PPM solution with collaboration capabilities, advanced analytics that drive insights, and the ability to customize and extend the solution to meet the unique needs of your organization. Let's take a look at Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams known as the hub for teamwork in Office 365. Then we have uh, several different areas we'll look into here, mobile and social, diverse and global, team-based and collaborative. Now with regard to mobile and social, and today when people collaborate, they leverage a lot of social tools. Uh, according to some studies, 45% use social technologies in their day-to-day -day work. Users also work across more devices. Uh, in the past five years, the number of devices has increased by approximately 400%. A mobile phone has completely changed how we communicate and work, and many users live on their phone. Uh, in addition, people use different apps and services running in them, having to jump between different experiences during the day. Moving on to diverse and global, the workforce itself is more diverse. For the first time, there are five generations together in the workplace, all with different background and technology and different expectations about communication and collaboration tools. Some people are comfortable chatting on a phone, others prefer email, uh, and then yet others prefer face-to-face. -face. 
Another thing is that teams are increasingly geographically distributed. So employees are no longer uh, necessarily in the same office, right? So let alone the same time zone. So per IDC studies, 72% of employees will be working remotely by 2020, making it more challenging to have face-to-face conversations. So, you know, again, greater need to enable communications and collaboration regardless of the geography. Uh, and then finally, team-based and collaborative. There's also a movement towards transparency and inclusivity on how decisions are made. Organization structures are becoming more flat, meaning people are in twice as many teams as they were five years ago. And those teams are dynamic. It's rare that people don't change on a multi-month project. And when someone does leave, the first step is for all to go through their email to find the information needed to get that new person up to speed. Being on more teams has also led to a dramatic increase in the amount of collaboration. The new way of work is team-based and collaborative. Workers report that 80% of their time is spent collaborating. All right, so let's take a look at first Project Online, how it looks. Those of you who have seen it, this will be a little repetitive. Uh, for those of you who haven't, uh, you know, we're not going to go into a lot of detail. If you want to see a lot of detail at demonstration depth, contact us directly, or we do have videos that will provide more in-depth interview, or rather, uh, demonstrations of the product. Uh, this is the home page of the tool set. Typically, you'll have different roles that will access this tool set and will want access to different areas within the tool set. So we may have a team member. We may have somebody who's an executive or works in the PMO. Okay. Um, one of the places people might want to venture is called Project Center, which is where the entire portfolio of projects can be viewed. And, and this is a view in Project Center that shows our projects grouped by uh, their timelines or their phases rather, right? So we have a proposal phase. Within there, we have uh, different stages, initiate business case, project requests, request review. Okay? Uh, after proposal, we make it to selection, which basically means we're determining which projects align with our strategic objectives. If they're selected, they move into planning. Uh, and we do detailed scope and schedule. Subsequent to that, projects will be executed. And uh, subsequent to that, they'll, they'll go into closing and eventually they will finally be a closed project. So uh, again, that's just a, a view of you know, where we would want to analyze and look at project related data. Uh, another very common area uh, within the tool set would be, um, you're probably going to venture to, uh, now let's go ahead and, and back up here. Okay, another area that we'd spend some time in would be uh, resource center. So if I click that resource link, that'll take me to the resource center and we can view the resources in different ways. Right now they're grouped by role. Uh, you know, we want to understand who's working and what people are over allocated or underutilized, depending on the perspective we need to see. Uh, we can see that information, right? So that'd be a resource center view. Uh, so notice that, you know, I, I have all these different areas with, with really lots of information. Um, you know, what I also have available to me is my Microsoft Teams environment. You know, so uh, those of you that are familiar with it, you can set up your teams and within each team, right, we can have our different channels depending on uh, the participants and the types of discussion and the information being exchanged. So I have the PMO, general channel, and then a professional development channel. Okay, I could also have the Mark 8 project team and then my channels are general. I uh, have engineering, manufacturing, marketing, and development. Okay, so again, it, it's, it's the channels are based on the types of discussions and people, participants that would take place within them. Uh, another possibility is, you know, maybe we also would like to be able to access Project Align from within this team environment. And if that were the case, how would we do it and what would that look like? What are the possibilities? Uh, what I did is I created a couple of, of teams here. And the reason for the couple of teams is one is based on the perspective of a team member role and the other is based on the perspective of, you know, more of an executive or a director level role. But let's take a look at the, the team member role first. We'll click on that. And it's for a project called Employee Reporting Portal Upgrade for Contoso EU Offices. And I have one channel, just general. Again, you could break this out into as many channels as you, you feel is necessary for the execution of your project. Just kept it simple for the purposes of, of just showing this integration here. Look in the different tabs up here. Files, Wiki Calendar, you know, some of those are the defaults that come with the Teams environment. And then if you look over a little bit, Timesheet, Risk Issues, Documents, Manage timesheets, uh, issues, and risks on the very end. 
those are some tabs that we added to this particular channel that will give us a gateway right into various areas within project and line environment. Therefore, me as a team member, instead of me you know, doing work on different teams within here and within teams and channels, exchanging documentations, having conversations, and then having to go to Project Online to do certain things, for instance, fill out my timesheet, create risks and issues, uh, interact with project documentation, it can all be accessed right within here. One of the things I may have to do, uh, for instance, is access a timesheet if you're using the timesheet functionality within Project Online. If that's the case, uh, you can make it so that the, the timesheet specifically from Project Online, Project Server would show up right within. So you can see I clicked on the timesheet link there. What did it do? Well, it brought in the timesheet, and this shows me basically the work items that are currently assigned to me. There's one project there. Another project, I have some operational activities assigned to me too. Yeah, it's very easy. If I have some work that I performed on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah, I can just set to the time and like so. And when I'm done for the week, I can just click send, send progress, or turn in the timesheet. And I am done. And that did not require me to have to uh, you know, click out of Teams, go into Project Align uh, to go ahead and do that work and then come back in Teams, the hub for my day-to-day -day work to continue. Right, so that's an example of what your timesheet would look like. I can scroll forward and backward in my periods if I need to. I can select a particular period. Therefore, all your functionality is still there as it normally would be. I can change to the various views as well. Right? So it's all there. Uh, let's talk about risks and issues. You know, are we utilizing risks and issues? Do we want to pull that into the team's environment as well? And this is my risk list. This is the risk list that you would normally see within the project site. All the functionalities there, these are all risks that are stored within our project site. You know, I have the search functionality that I normally would have. And so I can find specific risks. If I want to bring all the risks back, I can do that as well. Note that when I click on this menu, again, all the same functionality you would have within the project site. You can be alerted. You can attach a workflow. You can look at the details, edit, open it, whatever you really need to do. Uh, everything's here for you to be able to do to these items. Uh, you can also come up here and specify an alert at the list level. Uh, those are my my risks. You know, your issues, difference between the two. One's occurring, one you know, has the threat of occurring. Uh, issues of the items that are currently taking place in my project, right? So again, I can select the items, things I can do with it, I can be alerted, right? Same menu here, open, edit, share, copy the link, okay? So many things I can do there. Uh, we can deselect that item and notice that I have the view drop down. Very familiar, right? For those of you who've used Project Align, you can change to the different views as needed. What about your documents? You have documents for your projects. How do I get there? Well, you, know, you just provide the document link. And here is the gateway right into the documents that are stored within the project site. So, so it's not a copy of the documents into the Teams environment. It's really like a kind of a, a, a looking glass into you know, the documents that are stored in the project site. And again, you know, the same thing, you are able to search across the documents like so, very easy. Uh, if you noticed here, right, it'll search, give you more contextual information. Um, if we want to click directly on something, you know, what do we have? We have a PDF here. I can click directly on that. That'll bring it right up open in the viewer. So I can view this item here. I can page through the different items that are stored in the document library, click right out. So there's the ability to look at the documents. And then finally, um, do you need to find a specific timesheet to fill in time? Do you need to recall a timesheet? Uh, you know, here is literally where you could actually, uh, you know, again, manage your different timesheets, go back to time periods and so forth, uh, something that you would usually have to go with in Project Line. And finally, this last link, you know, if you're assigned to anything and anything being an issues or risks, this last link will be a quick gateway into, hey, what issues and risks am I assigned to across all these different projects? And now you can see all the different risks and issues. That would be, um, you know, something you could see from a team member's perspective, changing gears, switching hats, hey, let's look at it from you know, maybe a director level. What does the director really want to see? Well, you know, the director is probably going to want to see a view such as Project Center. Yeah, I'd like to look at all the projects currently going on within the organization. And here's my Project Center view. You can see it right there. Okay, you can see that, that again, it's just like being within Project Align, except it's within you know, my team's environment. I'm not bringing in the whole uh, 
project online app via an iframe like you might normally see it's it's just the specific web part that i would like to see project center i can switch to different views here okay so i can just the post side department uh, financials by type wh whatever it really is that i need to see here the different views are going to be available to me uh, what else might be important maybe resource center i can quickly switch to resource center i have a few resources selected maybe i'd like to do some capacity planning here uh, see who's over allocated and see if folks are uh, being fully utilized I, again it's it's what's important for me to see when it comes to the point when i want to see um, maybe more robust uh, reported type of information or reporting information uh, i might want to actually pull in some power bi based reports as well for instance i might want to report see a status report for this particular project that i'm querying on and this is a a Power BI based status report for the employee reporting portal upgrade for Contoso. There it is within the team's environment. And again, I can, I can click this expand tab and it'll basically open the report, uh, wide screens that will give me all the real estate to be able to view this information. I have my KPIs, schedule work cost variances. I have the green indicators up here. Uh, you can see the details, the tiles showing the different metrics over here to the lower left. Uh, we have the project attributes up here. We have some more uh, attribution, project status, statement, description, work and cost over time, and your completed and upcoming milestones. So I get a lot for the project status. Uh, you know, maybe it's it's across the entire portfolio. I'd like a gateway into that as well, or a link into that via this channel. And that's where I can pull in a portfolio overview as well. And uh, yeah, I can start wherever I left off here. Here's an overall portfolio dashboard. Um, what do I have selected here? It looks like this is all selected. Therefore, this is the entire organization, project costs across all projects, all risk issues, OPEX, CAPEX, and they're all the different projects in the organization. Uh, you'll note the uh, bars up here, the donut and the bar right there. Bars represent the different phases. If I want to focus on execution, click right on the color representing execution, which is the light blue. Whole report uh, reformats itself to filter for just that information I'm looking for. New product dev, I can also go over here and click right on new product dev in the donut. And again, the entire report will filter to show me just that info. Therefore, it's, again, it's everything at my fingertip. And this is just an example of some of the items that I could bring in here. I could also bring in a project summary item. This would basically show me graphically the representation of stages within a project. And in this case, it is a specific project, the employer portal. Uh, project is showing me the different stages, showing me late and upcoming tasks, depending on where it happens to be. It's really up to you what you would want to specifically see within those different tabs here within Teams to pull from Project Online to make it so that we're not clicking back and forth between applications. And uh, that is pretty much what we wanted to show you folks today. Hope you got some value for that. If you have any questions on how to set this up, you'll like help setting it up or help uh, in any other way with uh, Microsoft PPM, Dynamics CRM, or SharePoint Online Office, uh, be sure to reach out. There's our contact information. You can go directly to our website. We'd love to hear from you. Have a great afternoon.